So on Fox News Sunday, White House aide Stephen Miller insisted that Congresswoman uh, Alexandria Casio cortez was criticizing the country, despite a direct comparison to something President Trump said. Take a listen. She's starting talking point. about policy. No, no, she's, she's not, saying her starting point. She's not point. talking about the country and the people. She's saying is garbage such a horrible word? She's saying that America, in her view, right now is garbage. But more, but no, no. But then I want to put something up on that regard because I want to put up a tweet from Donald Trump from 2014. He wrote, "The United States under President Obama has truly become the gang that couldn't shoot straight. Everything he touches turns to garbage." And you, Stephen, yeah, that isn't AOC. That's this, Donald J. Throughout Trump. Throughout this interview, Chris, you're continuing to conflate Donald Trump's criticisms of President Obama versus AOC's deep and systemic criticisms of the country itself. Well, and, and AOC talked about the country being powerful and just and strong and wanting it to get back to that. But talked about Donald Trump's policies being garbage, just like Donald Trump in 2014 said Barack Obama's policies were garbage. So I guess, Mika, yeah. Donald Trump needs to go back to Scotland because that's where his mom immigrated from. More now from Fox News Sunday host Chris Wallace confronting White House senior advisor Stephen Miller on the blatantly racial approach of the president's strategy and disputing Miller's attempt to claim the president is merely criticizing the congresswoman on their policies. The president said that President Obama has been the most ignorant president in our history. When asked about Putin, he said, there are a lot of killers. You think our country is so innocent? That isn't, you know, his view. That's being sharply critical of the United States, as critical as the four members of the Cong of the squad have been. What I'm saying is there's a there's a canyon-sized difference between saying that we need to have better enforcement of our immigration laws to protect U.S. citizens, that we need to have better trade deals to end the deindustrialization. That isn't what I'm, I'm no, talking no, about. Yes, it is because what That's you're what talking, the president about. ran a campaign. That could be summarized in two words America first. There's a huge difference between America first and an ideology that runs down America. If you want to sum up. You don't think that you don't think the you, president ran down, lock her up? The president America is, is not first American. Is about He's a, the, the court. I mean, look, I completely, nobody has any problem right. with what the president's policies have been. It's when he goes into. Stoking racial fears. I've never called. I've never called any of his tweets racist. But there's no question that he is stoking racial divisions. Chris, the core element of the president's philosophy is America first. Yeah, America first. But Chris Wallace was actually talking right. about a time on Morning Joe in the early December of 2015 when he was praising Putin as a great leader, and we said, "But wait a second, he kills journalists." and yep. political opponents. And Donald Trump, speaking of U.S. soldiers in Iraq, said, yeah, well, we kill a lot of people, too. Comparing our soldiers unfavorably to Vladimir Putin. So please, Stephen Miller, please, Donald. Donald. No better. You're making a fool of yourself again. This ends very badly for you. Speaking of which, Elise. It does. Um, all of this is deeply offensive. But I'm already tired <laughs> at all the op-eds I'm going to have to read. After Donald Trump loses in a landslide, people saying, well, of course, this was due to happen because his bigotry only appealed <laughs> to one-third of the electorate. That will happen. Just like we said, Donald Trump could win. I'm telling you, that will happen. This is what, this is what gets me. This is such a losing proposition. This is the politics of subtraction. There is no way this leads to victory. This gets women, suburban voters, uh, educated voters, uh, of course, people of color. It gets them fired up in a way that they'll, they'll go out to vote, whereas this depresses a lot of support for Donald Trump. I, I, that's what I don't understand, Elise, why he's being a bigot and a racist 
thinking that that's going to help him get elected. It's not. It's mm -hmm. going to ensure that he is routed next year. Joe, I think you're being a little bit too charitable regarding Donald Trump having an actual strategy <laughs> in the first place. I think that this is who he is. He's racist. Yeah. You've seen it, you know, in his entire career, whether it's, you know, calling for five young black men who are innocent to be executed. You see it in his comments consistently throughout the course of his campaign, wanting to ban an entire religion from entering the country. And just this week, to, you know, the horrible remarks that, uh, you know, a, an elected official elected by her fellow country men and women should be grateful to be in the country and should leave otherwise. And it's just incredible mm -hmm. to me that we still are not being just more forthright and, you know, saying this for what it is. It's Donald Trump. He is not, you know, you listen to how he's speaking sometimes and the crazy things that come out of his mouth. And you wonder why someone isn't just taking him to Walter Reed for a full on medical because it just doesn't all seem to be, you know, flowing that well. And I think it's why he's going back to his greatest original trick, being racist. Well, if you look at why it's the three D's, we've discussed this, Joe, distract, mm. deflect, divide. If you look at what the other stories were percolating uh, during Charlottesville and other times when he projected racist behavior. And you look at the stories that are hot right now and getting hotter, Jeffrey Epstein and Robert Mueller uh, testifying this week in Washington. So it's the three Ds, distract, deflect, well, divide, and is. of course desensitize America to horrific behavior. It, it, it is, but Jonathan Lemire though, uh, Donald Trump actually doesn't believe in anything but Donald Trump. And if marrying a refugee tomorrow would help him get reelected, <laughs> he would marry a refugee tomorrow. Back in the 1990s, when it was important to him to have a great relationship with black musicians, uh, community leaders, uh, because uh, he had his casino and his fights, and he wanted to be, he wanted hip hop artists to be next to him, and he wanted to be friends with Al Sharpton, and he dated uh, a black woman, dated has dated black women throughout his life. Uh, Al Sharpton will tell you he was he was all over him. He was all over the hip-hop community. He was all over boxers. He was all over professional athletes because in the 1990s, he thought that helped his career, hope, thought it, it, it helped his reputation, uh, thought it helped his sort of his buzz. In fact, you can even see at the end of the campaign in 2016, Jay-Z being uncomfortable at a Hillary rally saying something negative about Donald Trump. That is how transactional Donald Trump has been his entire life. Right. There are very few things that are ideologically consistent about Donald Trump. Some trade beliefs about trade, maybe some isolationism. Uh, but I will say, this has been a consistent belief since the birtherism cause. So this, we're coming up on a decade where he has been saying this, at least publicly, that this right. is where he is. Two other quick things. I didn't want to let it go unremarked upon your dynamite JFK impersonation earlier. Uh, and you do sort of have yes. like a, a Hyannisport look to it uh, today, which I think is, is, is very appropriate. But secondly, it's not, just, <laughs> it's not just the message from the Sunday show yesterday. It's the messenger that after a week yes. of firestorm about racism and the president's meaning behind these tweets, who does the White House send out as their face to the Sunday talk shows? Oh. Stephen Miller, the architect of the immigration policy and who many believe is the engine behind a lot of the policies from this White House that many believe are indeed dividing this country along racial lines. This is a fight they want. You, you, you know, yes, Mika, actually, sure. it's, it's actually even worse than that, because right now the architect for the Trump immigration policy, mm -hmm. uh, it's Jared Kushner, who was actually uh, talking about keeping the numbers the same. Uh, One million immigrants coming in per year, uh, making it more merit based. Um, Stephen Miller actually, so it's, it's actually telling that he actually brings in the guy who is the extremist, the most extreme, the most anti-immigrant person who wants to reduce refugees, the number of refugees coming into America, yeah. land where the Statue of Liberty awaits for him and has for years, and 
uh, allow Donald Trump's family to come in from Germany and from Scotland. Miller wants to reduce the number of refugees coming in to, to practically zero. So, uh, you know, Jonathan's right. This is this is all about sending a message, a, a, a xenophobic, racist message to Donald Trump's most xenophobic and racist voters. James Downey wrote a piece where he says Miller's words betray the authoritarianism at the heart of the Trump administration. And he, he continues to say to disagree with this president is to disagree with America itself. To criticize the country is to tear it down. To suggest America as currently constructed is imperfect is to threaten Americans' very lives. It is a chilling vision. And the sooner its adherents are out of power, the better. Still ahead on Morning Joe, we mentioned some new polling from Iowa, but there's also snapshots from New Hampshire, South Carolina, California, and Texas. Those numbers are straight ahead. But first, President Trump went to some length last week to remind everyone that it's a British tanker seized by Iran, not American. Will that absolve the U.S. from acting? Our foreign policy roundtable is ahead on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.